So last week I ventured into the forest with a buddy of mine to forage for wild ramps. In that video we covered like all things ramps, how to forage them, that sort of thing, so if you're into that, peep it. But in this video, part two of two of the ramp mini-series, we will kick it in my kitchen and I will share with you how I prepared last week's bounty of ramps. So let's get into it! We made it back, it's getting a little dark. You should smell my car right now. My car reeks of like this oniony, funky, garlic ramp smell. So let's get these out of here and in there and I'll show you guys how I like to whip these up. So things that you pull from the earth generally are quite dirty. Ramps, also called wild leeks, are no exception. Matter of fact, just like their long lost onion brothers, ramps have a reputation for their filthiness. But none of that really matters because I'm going to show you how to wipe them down. I like to have a clean towel here, the ramps here, running water here to clean them off, and then I put the clean ones right here and lay them all out, so it's simple as that. Here's a close up of a ramp. The leaves are bright green, soft, and tend to slump over when fully developed. As we move down the stem, the color begins to change to maroon before we get to the white bottom bulb. The bulb of the ramp has roots similar to a leek or a green onion and is protected by a slimy mesh barrier that we need to remove before preparing. To remove the slimy barrier, run your fingers down the bulb of the ramp ever so gently and pull it over its roots. From here you can either twist and pull the roots off or carefully use a paring knife to slice off the roots. If you decide to use a paring knife, just be careful not to cut off too much of the bulb. Slice as close to the roots as you can. And that's one geeked up ramparoni. Be sure to toss the gooey root waste in the trash. With the bulk of the cleaning finished, rinse the ramp under cold water and knock off any remaining dirt. Be sure to clean where the leaves meet the stem, dirt can get lodged in there sometimes, it's pretty annoying. Then just rinse and repeat. Pun 1000% intended, this is probably going to take you like 20 minutes. Cleaning ramps can be tedious, but it's all part of the process. After this, you'll be rewarded with what I believe is to be one of the most delicious and interesting vegetables to cook with. Once clean, gently pat down with a clean towel. Now let's talk about storage. Ramp bulbs and leaves have different shelf lives. The leaves tend to wilt and go bad before the bulbs do. Because of this, it's good practice to store them separately. With a sharp knife cut right under the leaves where they meet the stem. If you'd like to save some time, instead of cutting the ramps one at a time, simply line them up as best you can and slice them right at the joint. Treat the bulbs of the ramps like you would any other onion. After all, ramps and onions are in the same family. The leaves of the ramps are flooded with flavor, so don't underestimate these things. In terms of your storage, you're going to treat them like you would greens, but I would not eat them raw. I mean, do your thing, but these things are spicy. Store the leaves in a plastic bag wrapped in a few sheets of paper towel. Be sure to leave a little opening in the bag to let some, but not all of the moisture out. As for the bulbs, they're a little hardier. Just toss these pups straight into a plastic bag or some other container. Store both the leaves and the bulbs in the fridge and pull from them as needed. It goes without saying there are gazillions of ways to cook with ramps. You can bake them into breads, flavor your rice, make pickles or kimchi with them, make a compound butter, French onion soup, but with ramps, or just make a sauce with it. The list really does go on and on. If you're feeling creative, just think to yourself, what ways do people cook with onions? Chances are you can use the same techniques, but with ramps. Today, with the leaves, I'm going to make a toasted walnut and ramp pesto. Then after, we're going to quick pickle the bulbs. And I really have no idea why. I grated the parm like that. Don't grate the parm like that. To a blender, add the toasted walnuts, parmesan cheese, and a little bit of neutral oil. I'm using grapeseed. Blitz everything up until a grainy but emulsified paste forms. From here, add in the first third of the chopped ramps. I chop them up to help them along in the blender. It just makes things work a little smoother. As the mixture churns down, add more ramp leaves until you use them all up. Once the puree comes together and smooths out like this, turn off the blender and transfer to a container. It's crazy how green this pesto stays. No blanching required. But be careful, you might need to adjust the amount of oil that you add in to diffuse some of the oniony heat from the ramps. Some ramps are stronger than others. The bulbs, like I mentioned earlier, are getting the quick pick treatment. I purposely decided to keep the pickling liquid neutral, meaning I did not add any herbs, spices, or seeds. And that's because I want the pickling liquid to become as rampy as possible. I'll use this pickling liquid to finish dishes, make vinaigrettes, and who knows, maybe even like pour a bit into a cocktail or something. Also, just a heads up if you're using my pickling liquid from the recipe below, I like my pickles on the saltier side as opposed to being sweeter. These pickles are a great way to preserve your ramps and really does help get rid of the mild depression that comes from using up your entire stash. Pop the pickles into the fridge, they'll last for a while. I like to keep mine for up to two months. 
I also like to wait a week before digging in to let the vinegar and ramps become best buddies. It's kind of funny, out of all these super delicious and creative ways to cook ramps, I think my favorite way of eating them might be just charred on the grill with a little bit of salt, straight up. Ramps really don't take very long to grill. The leaves take anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes while the bulbs take a little bit longer. But either way, depending on how many ramps you're grilling, the entire cooking process really should not take more than five minutes. I set my grill up to have two zones, one super hot for direct heat and the other side cooler. I'm going to lay the ramps in the grate so that the bulbs are over the direct heat and the leaves are over the indirect heat. This happens very fast. They look kind of messed up now, but we'll be really good at dinner. Mm. I had some hanger steak in the fridge that needed to be used, so that's what this is. Time to put together a quick din-din using our ramps and some stuff that I had in the fridge. Here I'm just lining a bowl with some farro, a hunk of that hanger steak, and the charred ramps fresh from the grill. The ram pesto we made earlier can be used as a dipping sauce, smothered on something, or even just like tossed into grains. The opportunities are endless. Looks like I chose the smothered on something door. It's nice to have a fresh sauce like this coming out of winter. Like around here, ramps are the alarm that lets cooks and chefs know that spring has finally arrived. So I hope that this little mini series was helpful to those of you who are interested in cooking and collecting your own ramps. Yeah, this vlog-ish style of video was definitely new to me, but I definitely enjoyed filming stuff like this. So do me a solid if you're into this type of thing or you wanna see more videos kinda like this, uh, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you made it this far, thanks a ton for watching. I appreciate you. And I'm going to do my very best to continue pumping out content like this worth watching. So if you're into that sort of thing, you liked what you saw here today, please consider subscribing and give the video a thumbs up if you dug it. And I will see all of you next week. So ta-ta, friends.